it's finally time. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video where today we are going to be reviewing The Star Beast, the first episode of the 60th anniversary specials written by Russell T. Davis, starring David Tennant and Catherine Tate. And I have a lot to say. Obviously, as you guys know, I actually went to the screening for this episode. So this is actually being filmed a little while in advance, which is how I'm able to get it out as quickly as I am. Don't expect this for every single review that I do. I'm hoping to do a reaction as soon as the episode airs, and then maybe the day after, followed by a more in-depth review, which is what I'm hoping this will be. So if you enjoyed this one, let me know if that's something you'd be interested in down in the comments below, but let's just get right into it. Also subscribe. So I think the best way to break this down is to go somewhat chronologically, because there's a couple of things to point out right as the episode starts. The first being the kind of catch-up scene that we have with the poor team of Doctor and Donna. Essentially, they catch us up on what happened in the events of Series 4. Now, I know when I was reading some earlier reviews, some people were hesitant to kind of see this. Personally, I thought it was a good idea, and the reason for that is I actually saw this episode with my mum, and she is the definition of someone who doesn't really watch Doctor Who, but kind of knows vaguely what the premise is, because obviously she lives with me, so she knows vaguely what Doctor Who is and what it's about. So that actually really worked well in filling her in on the events of Series 4 without dragging too much or being too overly complicated. And you do need some knowledge to go into this episode, but as I say, I think they catch you up really, really well. So if you're newer to Doctor Who and you don't necessarily have an encyclopedic knowledge of it, don't worry, this episode catches you up with everything you need to know. Next up, we have the title sequence. I have to say, I really enjoyed this. I loved seeing the TARDIS back in the title sequence. That's something I've been campaigning for for a while. I thought it had some real pace to it, some real scale to it, because obviously there was some scenes where it was going through the vortex, but also where it was going into the wider aspects of space, which I really, really liked. Yeah, I really enjoyed this title sequence, personally. Don't get me wrong, I did enjoy the Whitaker one for what it was, but I did just miss the sort of speed and the sort of excitement of having the TARDIS in there, and it just really made it for me. Also, I think the theme music sounded really good. Obviously, I know we've heard it before via the concert, but this was our first time hearing it, you know, properly as a studio recorded version. And I will say, I think it worked a lot better here than it did at the concert itself. Next up, I'm going to talk about the characters. So first of all, I want to obviously talk about the full team of Doctor himself, David Tennant. And I know every single publication has been saying it, but it genuinely feels like he's never been away. He slipped back into the role so effortlessly, while simultaneously you get hints of a different personality in there. There's the line that was mentioned in Doctor Who magazine about, oh, do I say love now? I guess I do, in reference to Donna, which was really, really nice. There's a couple of references to other Doctors and that Doctor being other Doctors, and you get a really nice exchange between Shirley Ann Bingham's character, which we'll come on to in a second, and the Doctor, where she says, oh, but those are your future selves, you're not supposed to know about those, and then he says, I regenerated again into this old face. So that caught people up who weren't aware of what happened in the events of Power of the Doctor as well. There's a really fun scene where, where the Doctor brings the Wrath Warriors and the Beep together to essentially stand trial, and he wears, like, the Judge wig. I don't know where that wig came from, but it was really funny to see him in it. And even though Tannen is older, he still had the same amount of energy and warmth that he always had. Particular highlights for me with Tannen were towards the end when the climax is happening, and he's kind of having a heart-to-heart -heart with Donna, Again, I'll go more into the specifics of that later, as well as the Wilf Mansion in this episode, specifically the first one. There are a couple of Wilf Mansions in this. Specifically, there's one towards the end, but there's also one towards the beginning where he thinks Wilf has passed away, but Donna goes, oh, no, he hasn't passed away, and he goes, oh, I loved that man. Really, really sweet, really nice, and obviously that hits different now, knowing that Bernard Cribbins has now, in fact, passed away. They do reveal in this episode that Bernard Cribbins is Wilf, is being taken care of in like a retirement home by Kate and by Unit. Kate apparently said that because he was an old soldier, she would help look after him, which I thought was really nice. And it looks like we definitely will see Wilf in these next few specials because the way it ends is that they try and go and see Wilf, but things go wrong. But I have to give the gold star to Catherine Tate as Donna Noble here. As much as I love David as the Doctor, and I really, really do, I think Catherine Tate stole the show for me. Her dialogue and her humour has not skipped a beat. She literally feels like she walks right out of 2008. Literally, she looks the exact same as well. But the humour for me in this episode in particular, and particularly from the Noble family, was so, so good. The lines that really got me in particular is when she's being the protective mother to Rose, Yasmin Finney's character, and she's saying things like, I will descend 
if anyone hurts you, I will descend. I loved that. And I also loved her kind of mocking the Doctor, being like, oh, you can get away with those suits when you're under 35, but after that, it starts to get a little bit, you know, really, really good stuff. And obviously her reactions to the various alien happenings was great to get off me, you space rat, which we saw in one of the promo videos as well. Absolutely loved that. It was also really funny to see Sylvia try and protect Donna from the Doctor. It's really funny because the Doctor's like sort of peeking out from like the door of the, of the noble's household and he's like, Sylvia, nice to see you. And Sylvia's just not having it at all. She's so angry. It's great. <laughs> yeah, the comedy in this episode really, really landed for me, especially with Donna. And they even have a little reference to Neris in there as well, with the Doctor saying that he's friends of Neris. Yasmin Finney's character, I also loved. I really wasn't sure what to expect from Yasmin because I haven't actually seen Heartstopper yet. But I really enjoyed her in this. I thought she was really, really good. Really down to earth as well. I really liked it. They explore the themes of her identity really well, I feel. I think there are a few lines in there that certain corners of the internet are going to get mad at. But let them get mad at that, quite frankly. Doesn't bother me at all. I thought it was explored really well. And I think the connection between her and the beep, as she's kind of saying, oh, you know, I feel alone as well, really, really worked for me. And I loved the fact that she was making these toys to sell to make money for mum and dad. Really, really nice stuff. The way they deal with the lottery money, I will say, whilst I liked it a lot, I did think a little tiny bit contrived, just a little bit with the whole thing of, oh, I gave it all away to charities because I sort of had that subconscious desire to help people because of you. And whilst I like that, and whilst I enjoy that as a reason, you're telling me she didn't just leave like a couple of hundred grand in the bank account just to make sure they were all taken care of. It's still good though, and I liked it as a reason for Donna to do that. But with that, I guess we should get into the meat and potatoes of this plot. Beep the Meat. What an incredible villain Beep the Meat is. So again, for context, I saw this with my mum and she had no idea that Beep the Meat was going to turn out to be evil. So when he does, when he turns in that one scene in the car park, my mum was so shocked, she was loving all the scenes with Beep the Beep initially, being all cute. And then as soon as he turned, she was like, oh no, it was great. The Wrath Warriors were also incredibly cool. I do kind of wish that it spent a little bit longer on building up to Beep the Meep's reveal. It only really happens in that car park scene. And whilst that's a nice scene, I did think I could have had a couple more scenes of build up to Beep the Meep's reveal. Because in the comic, it's kind of a slow burn thing. But I understand they wanted to put more of the emphasis on the noble family and the kind of reunion with the Doctor and Donna and all of that. It makes sense. I think I'd have just liked a couple more scenes of that, as well as who the Wrath Warriors were and what their deal was, because you kind of get the impression from that car park scene that they're basically international police, but we don't really get to see them much beyond the one main scene where they go into Donna's Road and they start attacking the unit, which have, of course, been possessed by Beep the Meep to do his bidding. While we're on unit as well, Ruth Madley is Shirley Ann Bingham. Obviously, I interviewed her recently. She was absolutely fantastic. They do reveal that she is the latest scientific advisor, which makes me wonder what Kate's role is in UNIT now. I guess she's just the leader of all of UNIT, which I guess makes sense. And I loved the fact that she had, like, rockets and missiles in her chair. I thought that was so fun when she saves the Doctor from the possessed soldiers. I also loved the scene, specifically where... They're at the factory where Beep the Meep's rocket has landed and the soldiers are trying to go up and they see a bunch of stairs and they go, oh, sorry about the stairs. And she just goes, don't make me the problem, just get up there. Love that line. That line was great. Ruth Madley was fantastic. I could definitely see her being a core part of this new Hooniverse going forward. And I really enjoyed her presence, so I'm definitely happy for that. Same goes for Yasmin Finney as well, actually. But yeah, essentially the way it works is Beep the Meep lands, finds Yasmin Finney's rose, and then basically hides out with the nobles for a bit whilst the Wrath Warriors and the unit are attacking the building. And then eventually they reveal that Beep the is actually evil and he's trying to basically get back to his rocket and propel off. But if he propels off, it'll wipe out all of London. So the Doctor and Donna essentially have to stop it. And throughout kind of the third act, Donna starts to get bits of her memory back. She calls the Doctor the Doctor because up until that point, she didn't know the Doctor's name. But slowly but surely, you begin to see cracks of Donna from Series 4 come through until eventually it comes to a scene where the ship basically locks down. So the Doctor is in basically this area of all these different controls and the ship locks down split, and it splits into half. So the Doctor can't get to all the controls because Donna's on one side, the Doctor's on the other. And he essentially has to activate 
the memories of Donna Noble in order for her to help, because obviously she's still got the Doctor's mind buried deep within there. But of course he knows if he does this, Donna will die. So he activates the memories using basically a secret code that he had. I think Patrick Horn was mentioned in there, which I thought was funny. Very much Doctor's wife vibed. And then yeah, basically Metacrisis Donna comes back. You also hear a little bit of I Am The Doctor in there, which was fantastic. I thought that was a really fun way of signifying that, yeah, she's got a bit of the Doctor back in her. I thought the effects when she became the Doctor Donna again were really good. Really cool, like, regeneration-y type effects. So, yeah, basically, the Doctor and Donna stop Beep the Beep ship. They stop him from taking off. He blasts off into orbit. But, of course, Donna is dead, as far as the Doctor's concerned. Until it's revealed that the Metacrisis energy got siphoned off into Rose as well, because, obviously, Rose is the child of Donna. So a little bit of the Metacrisis energy got passed over into Rose, making it less of a fatal amount for each of them to take. So you also get a scene of her helping out with the rocket as well, which was really nice. So I think that was a really good way of dealing with it. And you get a scene towards the end of them kind of coming together to, I guess, release some of the excess energy they had. I am curious to see how much that's going to play into proceedings going forward. I wonder if the toy maker is going to play with that stuff going forward. I imagine he probably will. I don't think this will be a thing that will last, but I thought as a resolution to kind of this episode, I thought that worked really well. I also really liked how they tied that into things like Rose's name, the fact that she kind of remembered parts of the Doctor and Donna's adventures, as well as the fact that her toys manifest through all the old adventures that the Doctor and Donna had had, so that's why they all look like old Doctor Who monsters. Really, really cleverly done. Really like that a lot. The scene with Doctor and Donna in the rocket where she's like, I'm nothing, I can't do anything. And 14 is really like, no, you're not. You're amazing. Like, And he's really choking up at it. And the why does it have to be this thing when he realises what he's going to have to do to Donna prior to bringing back her memory is absolutely wonderful stuff. Tennant does give an amazing performance. I know I gave a lot of credit to Catherine Tate, but Tennant does give a great performance as well. When um, he says he's a friend of Neris to Sean Temple Noble, there's a line there where Sean's like, how is she? And 14 is like, oh, she's really well. And then Sean goes, oh, she's been in hospital. And then he goes, oh, not well, not well. <laughs> great, great stuff. The humour really landed for this. The emotion really landed for this. I have to say, I, I sort of did get a bit emotional when I saw the scene between Tennant and Tate towards the end on that rocket ship. So essentially, just as in the comic, the Wrath Warriors captured Beep the Meep. They have a little meeting towards the end. As I said, the regeneration metacrisis energy gets expelled from the Doctor and Rose, at least for now. And Beep the Meep gives this line of, oh, I'll get you next time, Doctor, sort of thing. But then he says, you'll see the boss soon, or something like that. I can't remember the exact line, but it's something to that effect, which I can only assume is a hint towards the toy maker. I mean, I feel like that would make the most logical sense. It'd be really cool if he was the reason Beep the Meep ship crashed on Earth in the first place. I think that made a lot of sense. I'm also wondering if he partly had influence over what happens at the end in the TARDIS as well. On the topic of the TARDIS, the Doctor and Donna kind of go, oh, imagine how lovely it would be for Wilf to see the Doctor again. And that kind of convinces Sylvia to let Donna have one more trip on the TARDIS. And they go inside the brand new interior. It looks phenomenal. All the different lights and colours and the size of it, it looks massive. I think this could be used for multiple Doctors to come, and I, I would like it to be. I'll probably have a full video on the TARDIS, or maybe like a TARDIS ranking in the future, but at the moment it basically feels like a classic TARDIS on steroids, but with kind of that sort of almost rustic feel of the tenant console room on the controls as well, which I really liked. I thought that was a really nice combination. It slightly gave War Doctor vibes to an extent, which is not a bad thing because that console room has grown on me whilst also feeling very fresh and very much its own thing. We're also very much in the DNA of Doctor Who and of all TARDISes. And Donna says, it's still a bit nippy in here, but she says it looks amazing and Tenant and Tate kind of have a fanboy moment over the TARDIS, which was lovely. But yeah, essentially, Donna says that she got fired from her past job by spilling the coffee, and the Doctor, before she says this, makes Donna a coffee with the new TARDIS, which is a fun little feature. And then she spills it on the console, and it starts exploding, and the TARDIS randomly gets dematerialized away into the beyond, into the wild blue yonder, which leads us very nicely into the next episode. I am going to assume, though, that part of the reason they end up where they end up is due to the toy maker. I think it'd be really nice if there was a little link between each of the three 
with the toy maker kind of being, you know, just a little looming threat. I think that would be good. I also loved the color changing aspect to the TARDIS. That was really cool. It briefly showed, I think, green and then red with the cloister bell and purple, which I assume is going to be shooties. And then it settled on blue, which was Tenant's choice. We really will have a disco TARDIS, which is awesome. I also want to say as well, because my mum is the definition of a casual viewer, like she knows vaguely about Doctor Who, she doesn't really know much. She loved this episode. So if we can extrapolate that effect onto the rest of the casual audience, I think this is going to do extremely well. I think this is going to be really well liked, which is very exciting. But overall, I really enjoyed this. I thought the Doctor and Donna dynamic was as good as ever. I really liked seeing the Noble family again in general. Beeps and Meep was fantastic. Miriam Margulies' voice performance. If you didn't tell me it was Miriam Margulies, I probably wouldn't know. It was that good. It just sounded like Beeps and Meep. Like exactly how I imagined Beeps and Meep would sound. Like I say, I do wish we got a little bit more time with the Wrath Warriors and kind of the build up to Beep being evil. But pacing wise, I do get it. And the only other criticism I have is that, yeah, I feel like the lottery money you know, maybe a little bit contrived, not super contrived. I did like the character reason for it. You could probably also make a case that the ending itself of the Doctor and Donna flicking all the buttons to stop Beep the Meep ship, you could probably say it's a bit stolen of Journey's endish, but I didn't mind that because I thought the character moments were good enough. I think that's always been my thing with Russell episodes, even if his, his resolution aren't always like, you know, the most intricate and planned out things in the world. He more than makes up for that for me with the character moments at the end. I also want to say as well, we got some new Sonic features in this episode, which I think has kind of been sort of hinted at before by promotional stuff. But yeah, it was revealed in this episode that the Doctor can create like holograms that show him little details about for example, Beep the Meat Ship, but also he can create shields with this new sonic screwdriver. They didn't actually explain where this sonic came from. I'm going to assume it was from the TARDIS, but I do wonder why it's got the ability to do holograms and all that different stuff. We do see in that wildly yonder promo image, I think, that he plugs it into the TARDIS, so maybe that's the thing that gives it a boost, because it makes you wonder why the sonic's never done that before. It does feel slightly overpowered, but we know this sonic isn't sticking around for long. So maybe Shitty ends up with a slightly less powerful Sonic, I'm not sure. But I will say it looked very good. Like visually, the holograms all look very good. The budget did feel high. And I want to give shout outs to Rachel Talone, who was the director. I mean, I love Rachel anyway, but this was a really, really strong outing. I thought the colours were super vibrant. I thought the CG on like Beep to Meep, the sort of hybrid nature of that with the practical effect looked really, really good. I also thought Murray's score was really good. Surprisingly, I thought, rather understated for Murray, not to say that you couldn't hear it, you absolutely could, you know, it was absolutely there and it was absolutely enhancing the scene, but it wasn't as, like, kind of prominent as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be way more prominent than it was, but I mean that in a good way, you know, it kind of complemented the scenes well, but it never felt to me like it was outstanding as well, because everything served its purpose well, and you got a little bit of the light motifs in there, a bit of the Doctor's theme, a bit of Donna's theme. It was really, really good, whilst also not feeling too kind of on the nose about it, and that was another thing I was worried about, because with a lot of these kind of things of old characters returning to franchises, there's kind of been this gimmick of... Haha, <laughs> look how stupid that old thing is. Immediate thing that comes to my mind is the Otto Octavius line in Spider-Man No Way Home, and I was really worried they were going to kind of treat this in a similar way. And whilst they're jokes, they treat the core premise of Beep to Meep and the Wrath Warriors and all the rest of it completely seriously, which I really appreciate it. But yeah, overall, an incredibly fun start to the 60th anniversary. I can't wait to see where it goes next. As I said in my kind of reaction video from the premiere, i probably say like an 8, 8.5 out of 10. It's in that kind of range. I don't tend to do numbered scores, but if you care about that, that's kind of what my thoughts would be. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought about the Star Beast. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. That would be greatly appreciated. I've tried my best to make this as in-depth as possible, and I will see you later.